Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast is your one-stop shop for fantasy football news and advice. Can't decide on who to draft on the first round? Going gaga on how to line up your team. Got you covered. Traditional leagues, dynasty leagues, PPR leagues, IDP leagues, IDP leagues, even daily fantasy football leagues. Join us as we break down all the questions of fantasy football. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. Welcome, GSMC Nation, to GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast on the GSMC Podcast Network. I am their host, as I am every Friday. That's Ethan. And just guess what happened last night? I was up. Now I'm up right now recording. The draft first round just happened, and it was really, really nice. It was good to have. A little bit of normality back in our lives when it comes to sports. And I have to say, the draft didn't really disappoint too much, man. It was, uh, it was an exciting draft in the first round. And it was just as my phone, you know, does the doo-doo-doo, doo-doo-doo. But it was really exciting, man. I enjoyed it for what it was. And although we couldn't watch people go up and celebrate their dreams on stage or be in larger gatherings with family members and stuff, they still did the best they they could have with the draft, and it was still a, a well-done production all in all. Now I'm really excited to see what they do with the second round and so on and so forth of how they present things like that because in years prior, you know, everybody tunes in for the first round and second round just dwindles off. But I'm sure people are going to be checking out for all the different rounds during the day and during the rest of the week on just who's going to be going where because there's just no sports going on right now. So why not tune into the NFL draft? So we have a lot of stuff to talk about today. Clearly the NFL draft, the different picks, who who sold, who, who ended up doing well, this, that, and the third. And also some just general NFL news also happened. I guess we also have to... Talk about the fact that Gronk is going to the Buccaneers and all of the Brady antics and just general free agent stuff. So that's all coming up. But first, we got to talk about the NFL draft as a whole, the product, how it was displayed. I think they did about as good of a job as I think they could have with the NFL draft. They couldn't have made this any more less drawn out than it could have been. I don't know if it was because of just they needed to secure as much time for these owners and GMs to make their picks the way they wanted to make them and all of that. But to be honest, I feel like 10 minutes a pick was just ridiculous. Or 9 minutes what it was, it was just ridiculous. I just can't. The draft started at 8. The draft didn't end really until 12 10 12 20 so in reality that's so long that is just that's way too long it felt like when we were watching the national championship game last year where halftime was at 10 30 and we still weren't out of halftime at the point and that game started at like almost eight o'clock it was just out of control you know, even though kids are at the house, kids still got to go to bed. Old folks got to go to bed, too. Sometimes I like to go to bed a little bit early. But, alas, that won't be happening tonight right now, at least. We're going to be having a lot of different football conversation. But the production was kind of cool. They definitely kept up the tradition of showing, you know, hot clips, hot highlights of certain players and certain plays. And they had that whole production going on while everybody else was kind of doing the the first take screens going on. They did have two people in-house, I believe, doing some just general 
general painting of the canvas painting, I like to call it, where they uh, paint the picture for the overall player that's coming in on the draft board and just bringing in their story because everybody in the draft basically had their own story and their own way of coming into the draft. That's how they kept it going. That's how they filled in the gaps was talking about all the different players' stories and just where they came from and what it means to them to be drafted in the NFL. It was all nice. There's a lot of sad, sad sap stories though. There were some pretty, pretty good ones, man. It was, uh, some tear jerkers out there. Uh, the draft was, wow, it was just so long, man. It was just a long experience. I was sitting there. I had my, my box of popcorn, had my ginger ale. I was ready. I had my pen and notepad, and I was just, had Twitter open. I just had a whole bunch of stuff going. I was in a, a group Skype call with some buddies that we always do every year during the draft to see just who was going to make the mistake first which team was going to make a move that uh, someone was not going to agree with. I'll tell you what, Dallas made a lot of uh, my NFC East friends very, very unhappy today. <laughs> I'll tell you that uh, NFC East is on full life alert right now as Dallas is really tooling up, man. They're really trying to figure some stuff out. And they definitely have given Dak all the weapons he he would need to succeed and push on through the first round of the playoffs. I'll tell you that they definitely are no longer a first round playoff team anymore. They are a team that is built to really contend for more than that. I'm not going to sit here and say they're Super Bowl contenders, but they're definitely deep playoff run contenders now. And there's really no excuse for them not to make it this year. They shouldn't have had an excuse to not make it last year, but here we are. It's a new year, new system. Mike McCarthy or Mike McCarthy drafts the first wide receiver as the new head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. And once again, Green Bay does not give any sort of wide receiver or running back help to the Green Bay Packers in the first round. For the 15th straight year for Aaron Rodgers. And that has to be tough for him because, you know, Father Time is catching up to A-Rod and he's not getting any younger. And they were one game away from going back to the Super Bowl since they haven't been in so long. So I would have to imagine that this is just drafting Jordan Love, which has just really was so shocking. That was the shock. That was the shocker of the draft. We'll talk more about it. Later on, as we get, as we dive down into more picks and such, but that was really just so strange. And that was the, everybody was waiting for the talking point, I suppose, of the draft. Everybody was waiting for the hot take, the big reach, or the, the guy that nobody heard about, or things like that. And that was the one, really, that I never, I didn't know where Jordan Love was going to go. It was a lot of possibilities. I thought the Saints were going to take him at some point. Because it would seem like they have, they were the team that could sort of afford to reach at something. And quarterback might be one that they looked at, but they took offensive linemen, which I was very appreciative of. Because if you look at that playoff game, they got dismantled in the front and they also had a lot of injuries going on. So extra depth, extra guys that they can put in the offensive line to protect Drew for the next one to two years is definitely a plus in my book rather than a minus. So the Saints did their thing like they normally do and draft well, I'm, I'm predicting, and draft in good depth. So I have to assume that this is a good pick. And Green Bay just traded up to get Jordan Love, and maybe it's a security thing. But a lot of guys don't like to see when they're replacements are already picked for them way before they're ready to see that. So it's very similar to what happened with Brett Favre and now we're seeing it again. So it's kind of hilarious actually. It's very poetic, I suppose. But here we are. The NFL draft is here and we got a few more days to go. The first round was very excellent. A lot of things going on and I cannot wait for 
the second and third round installment of the NFL draft because I think it's going to be even better production than it usually is just because people are going to be paying attention to it way more and people are going to be bringing out their hot takes. People Twitter is going to be fun for the next couple days really because then they're going to get back into the last dance on Sunday after the NFL draft and that's just a good it's going to be a good final few days of sports topics sports debates sports conversation for the next upcoming few days so this week has been good for sports chalk one up for the sports guys out here we've been eating really nicely but we're going to take our first break of the evening and we're going to get into the first couple picks of the first round and just how my thoughts were on said picks You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco, ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project that's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Alright, so the first round had a lot of guys come in in the first five picks that were very, very much chalk. First round five, well the first five of the first round were very much chalk. And there was only really one guy who got in there that a lot of people didn't really have going to New York that early. They thought if New York were to trade now, maybe so. But... It was very interesting. So Cincinnati, of course, drafted Joe Burrow. In fact, Joe Burrow got a letter in the mail and an invitation to the Bengals and to the city of Seattle or Cincinnati himself, I think a day before the draft. So it was pretty much a shoe in that Joe Burrow was going to be a Cincinnati Bengal. So it's official now. He's a part of the team. He gets to throw the ball to A.J. Green and company. It's going to be really interesting to see what how him and Joe Mixon 
and those guys really get together and mesh it out. And I really want to see what the rest of their draft is going to look like because they still have a lot of holes to fix on that defense. And their offensive line probably needs some work too, as Andy Dalton didn't have a lot of time to throw the football either comparatively. So it's going to be really, really intriguing to see how they handle all of this. And, you know, congrats to Joe Burrow. Excellent college season. But now it's time to basically get to work. You know what I'm saying? It's time to get to work. Uh, Same for Chase Young, who ends up going to Washington. So this pick makes sense. He was the he's the best defender in the draft pound for pound at his position for sure. Chase Young uh, might be better than both Bosa brothers, and he's going to get after it in the NFC East, man. NFC East, the linemen are good, and if you can really stake a claim in that in that position, NFC East, you could be good for a very long time. As I've noticed that the NFC East have a lot of good defensive defensive front seven people there, man. They're just very talented guys. They also get a lot of TV time, so you're going to be seeing a lot of Chase Young for a long time. Detroit was the interesting one of the group for me to really look at because everyone thought that Detroit would trade down, and that is something that, for one, I want to talk about that because trading down is essentially a slap in the face to Matthew Stafford here. Now, they didn't get anybody offensively from Matthew Stafford to essentially use. But if they were to trade back again, like if that was like they couldn't trade back because no one really wanted their pick there. No one wanted to jump up for Jeffrey Okuda or anybody else. So it's just really, really insane to me the thought process of the Lions not taking. Jeffrey Okuda, especially after they got rid of Darius Slay, not even two months ago. So you needed a replacement. You got a younger guy on a cheaper salary. And at the end of the day, you have, you know, you have death and your team is not in a tanking position. You're not in a position to tank. Your team is actually very talented. It just ended up having the short end of the stick, and they got hurt early on in the season, including your all-star quarterback, who is still making a big payday, and you want to keep him happy. And I can't imagine that trading back in the draft and not getting immediate talent to help him out, even if it's on the defensive end, is a bad thing. I'm glad they weren't able to trade down, because it's starting to look bad for Detroit as far as sports organizations are concerned. I'm really concerned about that city and the people that follow each sporting franchise that it owns. New York, New York, New York, New York, New York, New York Giants, the big G men, the big G's. They got an offensive lineman, Mr. Thomas. He was the first out of Georgia, the first lineman off the board. And he, it makes sense for, for like New York. So if you look at it, Daniel Jones had an interesting rookie year. He had a lot of fumbles and that can somehow be equated to having a really, really bad O-line. Not to say that they had a good O-line the year prior when Eli was there. Eli was getting tagged up too. So it's really surprising to see what Saquon was able to do with a mediocre offensive line for two years. And now they're trying to beef that up. So they essentially have found their quarterback they're going to run with in Daniel Jones. And now they're trying to beef up the offensive line to make things happen for them. So New York is in the next stage of their rebuilding process. And that is to protect the quarterback. Smart move. Yeah, they were also a team that could have traded down. I think they might have been able to trade down for him, but I just don't know where you'd be trading down for or where, who was trading up for that spot and what they were going to take. Of course, five 
was Miami's pick, and that was for two attack Valoa. And they did the right thing here. They made the right pick. He feels good. It feels it feels right for him to be in Miami. It makes sense. I can see him in the uniform. He already gets comparisons to people like Dan Marino, especially uh, his throwing motion and just the way he is able to sling the football. He gets a lot of Dan Marino-esque comparisons. And the only thing that was really stopping him from really competing with the number one overall selection was the fact that he was had a lot of injury history and he had that really, 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 really unfortunate lower hip injury that really sidelined him ever since. So now Tua is a Miami Dolphin. And Miami made a lot of other moves in the first round to really, really help secure some things over there. Because they had three picks in the first round, which is really good for when you're trying to rebuild and make something out of nothing. All right. Uh, we can squeeze in a few more picks here before the next segment. So, L.A., they got Herbert. And I guess the my my immediate feelings are, should we check on... Mr. Tyrod, should we check on Tyrod Taylor? Is Tyrod Taylor okay? Is he doing all right? <laughs> Is he okay? Is he breathing? Is he on Twitter right now? Because I'm sure. Is he on a burner account? I got to check for the Tyrod burners. So I got to feel for him, man. This is probably the third time where he's just going to be sitting in a perennial backup role. But he's going to be a guy that eases him in. And then he's going to lose the starting job again. And to be honest, at this point, if he's not self-aware of this is just what he has become now, is it really? Whose fault is it really? I would have to assume that you have, when you're in that position, right? Either you have to understand that you are no longer the guy in the NFL. No one's looking to start Tyrod Taylor anymore and have them as their starting caliber quarterback. And you are a not only a bridge guy, but you're also a teacher. And you're a guy that's supposed to mold the youth coming into the NFL. And that's one of the most important jobs that a guy with as much experience as Tyrod has had in the NFL is supposed to do. He's supposed to mentor the young guy that essentially is not really taking his job but more so you're just holding his job for him as he learns and the team can maybe get a few wins but at least stay afloat enough before his actual debut and that's just the end all be all so you're checking in on Tyrod Tyrod has to be Knowing that this is it. <laughs> and this is probably his last stint as a starting call, like a starting guy. He's probably not going to start again unless somebody gets hurt or something like that. But he won't be a week one starter anymore for probably the rest of his career. This is probably the last time because once Herbert gets the reins, it's going to be over and he'll be Herbert's backup. And that will be the end of the story. But let's take a break and we'll continue on this draft talk. I want to talk to you guys about this amazing product I've been using lately called Hydrant. If you're like me and you want to kick the coffee habit, but you're worried about your energy levels depleting to avoid the morning sluggishness and that midday slump, you need to make sure you're hydrated. It's super important. And that's where I've been using Hydrant. And for 25% off your first order, you can go to drinkhydrant.com and enter promo code GSMC at checkout. Hydrant is basically flavored electrolyte packets you mix directly into your water to make hydrating your body easy and delicious. And what I love about Hydrant, it's backed by research. The formula was developed by Oxford scientists to provide perfectly balanced, efficient hydration. Again, that's drinkhydrant.com and enter promo code GSMC for 25% off your first order. 
Another really cool thing about Hydrant, there's no synthetic colors or artificial sweeteners. The formula is vegan and you can choose between three different flavors or a variety pack. So for all my vegan friendly fellows out there, this one's for you. Again, this is drinkhydrant.com and enter promo code GSMC. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. GSMCpodcast.com for more info. One of the bigger talking points of this year's draft was how deep the wide receiver class was and i believe we had let me count on my sheet one two three let's see there's some more around here four five we've had six six wide receivers go in the first round And none of them were named T. Higgins, which is kind of crazy to me. But at the same time, uh, T. Higgins, it was was a deep draft. And people liked what they liked and they saw what they needed. But let's go. Let's get deep into into this. The Raiders drafted Henry Ruggs III. Now, that's exciting to me as a fantasy player because I believe that the Raiders have a lot of talent around their fantasy, or around their team for fantasy purposes, of course. Josh Jacobs is a guy that can really light it up, or he lit it up last year in his rookie season. Of course, we know uh, Darren Waller had an excellent year last year at the tight end spot. And now we're putting in a legit number one wide receiver in Henry Ruggs III out there outside to draw some more attention, make some big plays. And now that offense looks really legit. As we know, honestly, if Antonio Brown was in a head case, they might have been able to make a run at the playoffs seriously with the roster they created last year. So now they're just bolstering up what they've lost, and they're making some things really, really exciting for the season to come. The next on the off the board was Jerry Judy, who, from Denver, is... That right there, now it's up to Drew Locke because they really have some some weapons here. So don't forget, they got Melvin Gordon in the offseason. Don't forget Cortland Sutton's out there. This is a this is a good three. This is a good, solid three people that they have come together. Now, Drew Locke has some weapons now, and we have to see if he can be the guy to get them the football. And Jerry Judy might be the best wide receiver in the draft, arguably. And he just he just makes things so much easier for your quarterback. He's so talented. He's so athletic. He has all the moves. His route running is really, really insanity. It's just his route running tape is stuff that you dream about from a wide receiver, from any footballer, from any standpoint. I don't know where he got his footwork from, but it had to have been a gift from God or something because it really was just, his tape is really, really crazy. It's phenomenal stuff. So I really think Denver made, has gotten the best out of their picks, really, I think. And that is just, it feels right. It feels like that was the thing they needed to do because Denver really hasn't had a true number one wide receiver since they had who was that huge wide receiver back in the day i can't even remember he went and won a super bowl with peyton manning 
and his name just escapes me. But ever since those days, he hasn't. Re- they haven't really had a quality wide receiver, and now they have one. You know, I believe he also played in the in the eighth, um, the SEC. So he'll come to me eventually. Another guy, this guy coming out of Oklahoma, CD Lamb went to Dallas, and this was the big one because CD Lamb fell all the way to Dallas. So he was projected really to go somewhere around that Jacksonville area. So instead of going to it might have gone to Jacksonville or they projected that Jacksonville would get Henry Ruggs and that the Raiders would get CD Lamb. But instead, of course, Ruggs ends up going to the Raiders and CeeDee Lamb just fell and Jerry Judy goes before CeeDee Lamb to Denver so now here we are I'm just personally glad that the Falcons did not did not pick well in my opinion and they went and got AJ Terrell who is a nice player nice cornerback out of Clemson but they could have probably got him if they traded back or made a smarter decision in my opinion because I don't think people were seeing him as a first round talent per se and I'm not thinking that he's going to be a bad player I think they could have got him in a later round and things would have been better suited for him at that place anyway CeeDee Lamb is probably pound for pound the best why I said Jerry Judy might be but that's just because I think CeeDee Lamb actually is the most talented wide receiver here. And I think he gets a little bit of a knock because he played. He didn't play SEC ball or he was in the he was in the Big 12 or whatever the case may be. He wasn't in supreme competition defensively. But at the same time, he did. he only can play where you can play. And he was really, really getting it done out there. He made so many plays last season that were just ridiculous. He was a speedster. He can run the route tree. He can do all this, that, and the third for you. And he really, really can shine in an offense with Dallas because he's not going to be by himself out there, of course. Dallas has so many offensive weapons now. They already had Ezekiel Elliott. They already had Amari Cooper. They already had guys in place. We thought Dallas was going to be good already. Now they're going to be even better bringing Dak back. And when they finally figure out Dak's deal, this team is set to be on a really, really good tear for years to come. And this was just the kind of the icing on the take on the cake for them. So they really, really figured this one out. This is like I heard someone say this is what Tavon Austin was supposed to be. And I think that makes a lot of sense. So this is like Tavon Austin if he actually had any wide receiver skills. All right, so Philly went and took uh, Jalen Riggins or or Jalen Riggers, excuse me. And he's a smaller guy, but he has a he's like five eleven, but he has a six eight wingspan. The dude can do it all. A lot of people say they see Brandon Cooks. He has a lot of good cut speed, so out of his cuts, he has a lot of he doesn't lose his speed. Good hands on the ball. Some people are saying that hey, this could be another uh this could be another situation where Philly drafts a wide receiver who may not be able to catch and has all this speed and a lot of potential, but I don't think that's the case. I think he's a good, safe pick that Philly really needed to really need to secure somebody out there on the outside that can really make a play for him, give another player for Carson Wentz to build upon and really, really cement himself as one of the better quarterbacks, not only in the NFC, but also in the NFL in general. Next, so Minnesota went and got Justin Jefferson which is great for them because they just got off of Stephon Diggs who was having issues with their previous or with his previous quarterback because he's on the Bills now. So what do they do? They go draft a guy who honestly 
might be have a little bit of Jordan, might have a little bit of Stefan Diggs in him as far as the playmaking ability. He had an excellent season last year as, as well as every other LSU Tiger, really. And he just did his thing, man. He really, really exploded on the scene. He was a zero star recruit, ends up on LSU and becomes one of the most storied players and one of the most storied seasons ever in college football. So the only way to top it off is to get drafted in the NFL. And he did so. My Minnesota has a lot of tools now. Him with along with Adam Thielen is going to be nasty. It's going to be nasty. And then of course uh Brandon uh Oyuk Ayak I think that's how it's pronounced I'm not too sure but uh drafted by San Fran he's another Swiss army knife another skill guy that can just do a whole lot come out the backfield split out wide go in the slot he's going to be doing in and around all over the place it's going to be crazy and once again they San Fran seems to be smarter than everybody else because they've been trading back and they've been fairing, picking their spots and picking guys and where they feel they need to pick them. And that's just where they are. So we're going to take another break and we're going to get into a little bit more of the draft on some potential steals and just interesting draft notes that I found. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco, ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. All right, so some interesting notes from the remainder of the draft. I thought number one in the first round, LSU put five players in the first round. That is quite a lot. Five out of 32. The SEC put in, I believe, 13 13 players. The over-under, some people had was 15. They put in 13 players in the first round. That's pretty insane the more you really look at it, but they put in 13 players. Uh, There were some trades that happened, so of course, San Fran traded 
back so Tampa Bay could trade up. And Tampa Bay took Tristan Ritz. And that was an interesting pickup because, as you know, Tampa Bay now has Tom Brady. They have a bunch of weapons, but they could use some offensive linemen to really, really bolster up, protect Brady in his last few years. San Fran took uh, Javon Kinlaw, who is a defensive front seven member. And it makes sense, as there's been a lot of reports that San Francisco is probably looking to move off some guys so that way they can get under, stay under the cap for years to come and to keep drafting youth. So that makes a lot of sense to me, especially after they just let, uh, I believe, Armstead walk, which is something that they were going to have to replace his level of production in the first place. So San Fran doing their due diligence to do that. Of course, here we have the Raiders. They had a few different picks. Uh, of course, we know they had Henry Ruggs. We also took uh, Demon Arnett, who a lot of people are kind of confused about because he could have went in way later rounds. And then the Falcons did a similar thing where... They drafted just a little bit too early, in my opinion. They should have either traded back. They drafted A.J. Terrell. They could have had Chaston. Or they could have had so many different players, but they chose chose him. So that's just up to them, I suppose. I think L.A. had a trade because New England traded back for like the thousandth year in a row. New England trades back, and they get kind of, I'm sorry, L.A., the Chargers get Kenneth Murray, which is really, really nice for them. He's a good linebacker. And he's a guy that can really come out there and make some noise. New Orleans got a center, Cesar Ruiz, or Cesar Reyes, and that's a good pick for the Saints, primarily because if you look at their playoff production last year, their offensive line got pushed around, and it was really, really bad scene for them against Minnesota, and not to mention they had injuries at the front, in the front. So in the trenches, they have to build depth. Every team needs to, and the Saints are no different. And a lot of Saints fans are probably feeling like it wasn't the flashy pick, but the more you think about it, it was the right pick and the smart pick to do. And I, for one, am very glad that we did not do the Jordan Love thing. So speaking of, we got to talk about Jordan Love and the Packers trading up to go get him from Miami. As Miami traded back once again. And Jordan Love, <laughs> I can't. It's just so crazy. It's it's really insane to me. What are you telling Aaron Rodgers? That your replacement is here? This is the guy you're supposed to mentor while you still feel like you are still somewhat in your prime and you can still play for another four or five years. If Tom Brady's still playing, you don't think Aaron Rodgers can still play right now? And you're telling me that you guys are already looking to replace me to find the next guy? Like, get out of here. <laughs> like, give me some help. Give me a wide receiver. There's still T. Higgins on the board. There, You could have traded up and you could have got a wide receiver earlier on. Like, this is just kind of ludicrous to me. If I would feel really, really slighted and feel some type of way if I was Aaron Rodgers. This is just unprecedented stuff. You really did this? You really did this on that? You went on national TV and decided to say, you know what? It's time to, it's time to prime the next, the next age of Packers quarterbacks. Maybe this is what Brett Favre felt like. Maybe this is what Brett Favre felt like. You never want your replacement in the office. That's crazy. It is really just crazy. I was listening to a Ryan Rosillo podcast just recently talking about this. Is that you, In sports and football, you never want to see the replacement. You never want to see the guy coming in to take your job. And Aaron Rodgers is seeing the guy coming in to eventually take his job. And there's just no ins, ands, or buts about that. And I don't know when that will happen. I don't think they see 
him coming off the cliff anytime soon, as in the Green Bay Packers, but you have to wonder what made them use a first-round pick on Jordan Love. I think Jordan Love would have been there. Don't you? Don't you all think Jordan Love would not? I'm speaking like you guys actually can hear me live, but I would have, Jordan Love would have been there, right? In the second round, third round, maybe? I just don't know. That's just tough. That's tough to me. That's, that's really, that's really an, uh, wow. I don't even know what to say about that. Let's move on, shall we? <laughs> uh, Patrick Queen to Baltimore is quite the quite the draft pick. So they move on from Ray Lewis, from C.J. Mosley, to now Patrick Queen. They are draft aficionados, man. If I'm telling you, Baltimore does not miss very often when it comes to drafting players. They have really, really good scouting. Their draft personnel is top-notch. Baltimore is doing great things. And they are figuring it out piece by piece, and they're just building and stacking upon themselves in great, great ways. So, this is after. It's weird to think that the Seahawks take Jordan Brooks, another defensive linebacker, or defense, a linebacker, and they miss, and they don't take Patrick Queen. Now, of course, maybe just scheme fit and all this stuff, but. I thought Patrick Queen was going to be a really, really good linebacker, and he still will be. It's just draft, you know, drafting is all about sometimes scheme and sometimes how people do in draft interviews and all this, that, and the third. So you never really know why people get passed up on. But I feel like that's going to be one where people look and say, he went that late over all these other guys? And, yeah, it's just a part of the whole spiel of the draft is you're never going to hit 100% of the time. But I think that's going to be a quality pick for Baltimore. And the Titans, they went and buffed up their offensive line, getting Isaiah Wilson coming out of Georgia. Once again, another Georgia offensive lineman. As you know, they breed those things down there. They breed those type of guys down there in the south, in the southern border of the United States. You know what I'm saying? So, the Southeast is where they create Beast, and he is a big guy. He's a guy that can really get out there and make some really, really impact blocks, and he really can be good in space. Uh, I forgot to mention that the steal of the draft is probably Isaiah Simmons falling to Arizona. What a pick. No, no, I couldn't have been, you couldn't have told me that Isaiah Simmons was going to fall from projected fourth overall to, let's see, one, two, three, four, four more picks down. He went from four to eight. Granted, I don't think he would. I thought if anybody would pick him after New York chose to pick uh, Mr. Thomas, I thought that he had a good chance of being picked by Carolina, potentially being that Luke Keekley kind of replacement as far as locker room presence and guy that can do it all but man Arizona really got a got a solid pick there when I tell you that they got a solid pick and really that's just the draft I can't wait to see what comes out of the draft in the next few days or so with the second round third round fourth round guys everybody's going to be really really locked in and paying quite a bit of attention so i'm just gonna be here waiting to see all that come down but we're gonna take another break here and we're gonna get into just general free agency news as things has happened since the draft or before the draft that we need to talk about are you looking to get your college football fix looking to get the latest news on your favorite school team the gsmc college football podcast is your ticket to all things college football join us as we talk college football from the national championship the college rivalries the bowl game to the heisman trophy to which conference is the best we've got you covered for the big 10 sec big 12 the pac-12 acc and everything in between download the gsmc college football podcast on itunes Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. 
Just type GSMC in the search bar. So, the Buccaneers have been busy this offseason all around the board, and it doesn't stop here today, so to speak, because a few days ago, the Buccaneers finalized a trade for Rob Gronkowski. Rob Gronkowski is back in the NFL. He did one wrestling match and said enough is enough. I'm going back to where I know best. And that is to play football with Mr. Tom Brady. And it was a move that I didn't really expect. I don't think anybody really expected. Once it was dropped, sort of a woge bomb. It was more like a Schefter, a Schefter explosion. <laughs> a, Schefter, a Schefter bomb, if you will, of talking about the Bucks and working out a trade with New England or... Uh, you know, Rob Gronkowski was looking for a trade out of New England, and then it was rumored it'd be the Bucks, and then within an hour he was traded to the Bucks, and then the trade was finalized, and then he got a physical pass. So this had to have been done in previous. This had to have been done in discussion, right? For a while, no way you just have a physical just ready to go and you pass it. With flying colors. Like this had to have been talked about. Had to have been in discussions. And I just. Have to believe that this was part of the Brady package. If Tom Brady was coming to. Tampa Bay. He had to get his guy Gronk to come with him. Because I'm sure this was in discussions beforehand. And they figured it out. And it just took some time. Because he needed to trade with New England to come get him. And. New England obviously was not just going to be gypped on it. They've had Gronk on contract still, and he was still tradable or whatever the case may be. And they wanted a little bit of it. They got a nice little ransom out of it, a second rounder and a fourth rounder for Gronkowski. That's pretty good, in my opinion, if I do say so myself. That's pretty good for Rob Gronkowski, a guy that, honestly, I thought was a little bit washed going out of his last season. And I thought that he ended it on a good note, you know, going out, winning the Super Bowl, and then calling it quits. So that has to be, this has to be something. Being one year out of football, uh, I guess to heal up, and now he gets to go try and win at least two more Super Bowls with Tom Brady in Tampa Bay. And Tom Brady hasn't been also out of the news per se, because he's been doing some antics. He's been working out in parks and being told to leave the premises. And he even entered the wrong house. He thought he was going to a coordinator's house. And turns out it was somebody else's house entirely. So Tom Brady is just all out of his element, really, in Tampa Bay. And, you know, this is just people just let Tom get away with too much stuff, man. The guy's breaking quarantine rules. He's breaking NFL rules, all different places in the way. He's going out to parks, trying to get workouts in. He's meeting with offensive coordinators. I'm pretty sure that's against the rules right now. You're not supposed to be meeting up with anybody. There's just all different sorts of stuff that everyone's just like, ha, ha, ha. Everybody's laughing at it, saying, oh, Tom, you scoundrel, you. You just do what you want, huh? And, yeah, they just kind of let Tom walk around and do whatever he wants to do. And that's just not okay, man. I'm I'm not cool with that. You guys cool with that? I'm just, you know, I'm I'm a little bit confused. I'm a little bit confused. When are we going to start putting the hammer down on Mr. Tom Brady? We did it once. We should try and do it again as the man tries to find any sort of way, which I respect. He tries to find any sort of way to get a competitive edge over his opponent. And I really don't like it because this guy, who is the ultimate competitor, the ultimate playmaker, the ultimate guy, when it comes down to clutchness, he's the one in my division. I don't like it. I don't like it. 
I need him out personally. Tampa Bay is about to be problematic because they have some things to handle out. First of all, they still have O.J. Howard on the roster, and it seems like him and Bruce Arians aren't mixing real well. Their philosophies of being down the field and making plays and, you know, being a serviceable tight end in the NFL position hasn't really been O.J. Howard's strong suit right now. And I would assume that he's going to be on the move soon. He may even be a draft piece in later rounds. Somebody might trade for him. And that would just be the end of his tenure there. But I have a hard time believing that this is, in fact, what's going to transpire here. Is they're going to have three tight ends, right? They can't just have three tight ends. So one of them's got to go, and it makes sense that O.J. Howard is going to be on the move. Nothing really has come up yet, but that's what only we can assume. You know, everything is a business, and the NFL is no different. So I hope there will be no hard feelings between them. But to be honest, when you see someone like Gronk come in for a one-year deal, $10 million, what do you expect? I expect that that's just what's going to happen. Someone's going to leave and Brady gets what he wants here because this is what it took to get Brady here to put you in this position to win. I would just be sad that I don't get to go try to win a championship with Tom Brady after you guys brought him in here. I was with Jameis for most of my career, if not all of it, and this is how I get treated. I get traded away from the winner. That sucks. (laughs) I would be hot. But uh, just some more free agency news all around. The Bills exercise the fifth year option on Tredavious White, which I am a big fan of. You know, Bills Mafia, stand up, if you know what I'm saying. Their defense has already been really, really good. And keeping Tredavious White on roster and trying to get him that payday that he's oh so deserves is something that I believe him and the Bills organization are really trying to work towards and making a real, real possibility. And exercising that fifth-year option is the first step in all of this. So doing that is a quality decision by them. And hopefully he gets paid soon. And hopefully, you know, we'll get to see him play a little bit more of a elevated status so he doesn't have to worry about when my next paycheck coming or... You know, my big payday is Kier, and I can go all out now. Not to say that he was holding back beforehand, but, you know, sometimes things like that happen. The Colts signed Trey Burton, tight end, formerly the tight end for the Chicago Bears, after having a really, really bad injury that sidelined him for basically the last couple of years or last year and a half. He is now on the Colts, which I think is really nice as it will complement already really good offense as, you know, their offense is already interesting enough. They have already have a good tight end who was once deemed one of the more irredeemable tight ends in the NFL, but really has found his own. And now they have Trey Burden. And of course they have Marlon Mack, the Mack man, my fantasy Mack and cheese. (laughs) I can't, it's late, man. I'm trying to figure it out. But, you know, Marlon Mack is cool. Of course, they have Tyler or T.Y. Hilton. And I really think that the Colts are probably going to find a wide receiver in this draft. Or they should because I don't think T.Y. can get it done by himself. And I don't think the Colts have really good wide receiver depth at all. And if things go south again like it did beforehand, you can't expect that the second-rate wide receivers can really hold the fort as much as you would like them to be able to. So they're going to have to figure it out on offense, but the first step is already seeming to be made as they sign Trey Burden. And I believe it was to a two-year deal. I believe it was a two-year deal, yeah. So Trey Burden on the Colts. Don't be surprised if the Colts are once again one of those teams where you – end up being shocked that they're four and two going into week seven and I'm not sure what they're gonna do afterwards, but we're all gonna be like, Wow, the Colts four and two? Who would have thought that? 
That's crazy. Marlon Mack almost has 500 rushing yards in seven games. Who would have thought that or whatever the case may be. I think Marlon Mack is up for a big year, and I think a lot of things are going to come out of that offense. But we're going to take another final break here, and we're going to end the podcast off in the next final segment. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA, it's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Okay, so I wanted the last segment to be more of a my general last leaming thoughts on the first round and then moving into the second and third round coming up. What am I going to expect to see? What do I feel like I'm going to be seeing? So I think, well, let me say this. I think the best player that's going to come out of the first round in this draft might be Jeffrey Okuda because I just think that if you want somebody who can go in, plug in, and play right now on any NFL team, for sure, I think Jeffrey Okuda is the guy that you want on your roster. He looks the part, he plays the part, and he sounds the part. He has the physicals, the intangibles that you want at the position, and he's just so freaking talented that I can it, it just makes sense. It makes sense. I think Jeffrey Okuda is going to be the best player in this draft. And I don't think that – I think that we'll look back and it'll be kind of like Patrick Peterson where we're like, wow, Patrick Peterson went seventh, but he is the best player in that draft class. And this draft class is really, really talented, so that says something. I think that is something. I think that Isaiah Simmons is going to be – a really, really interesting player to see develop and see which position he actually falls into. Because as they said on the broadcast, even so, he was the best safety in this draft. He was the best linebacker in this draft. He's the second best edge rusher in the draft. That sort of skill set is just something you don't find in one player that often. So the Arizona Cardinals really found somebody that they can really build upon for the next 10 years, 10, 15 years in the NFL, if he can last long, play healthy, stay healthy. So I think that's great. I think Dallas won the draft, really, at this point. Getting CeeDee Lamb already to bolster that offense, I think they have done well for themselves. Miami has done well. They didn't do anything risky. They didn't panic. They drafted Tua, their future, and they did they got offensive linemen to help bolster that O line to help protect Tua. So that just makes sense. Building upon what they already have. And I would love to see them be able to go into the second round because this is where we're leading off into now. The second round, I think, is going to be very, very much a lot of trade backs. So I think a lot of people are going to be trading and moving and shaking. A lot of people are going to be trading up into the second round, trying to get more picks or trying to position themselves to get the guy they really want at this round because I think there's a lot of talent left in this draft and the second round is going to be really, really busy and active. I think this is where we see the DeAndre Swifts of the world, where we see the J.K. Dobbins of the world get picked at. I don't know exactly to whom yet, but there's still so much offensive talent out there and running backs are one of those positions where you may not want them in the first round. They may not be first round talent, but you can see them go start going in the second round. And if you start to see people really, really start to go out there and say, yeah, we're taking this guy in the second round, then you're going to start seeing them come off the board and it's going to be real quick and people aren't going to be prepared for it. So I think running backs are going to be something that's going to be a big talking point in the second round. I think, Trades are going to be really active in the second and third round. 
And I believe that we're going to see some quarterbacks go maybe third round. I don't know about the second round. I don't know if uh, anybody's really hurting for a quarterback to go. I'm really interested to see if Jalen Hurts can go second round, but I'm feeling like since Jordan Love went so late, I just have a hard time thinking that people are even looking at the quarterback position right now. I think a lot of guys are still looking, or a lot of teams are still looking at skill position, skill position, skill position. Uh, I would be surprised if offensive linemen start flying off the board here in the second round. But this is where teams like the Saints, teams like New England, who have have like 13 picks in this draft, these later rounds are where teams like those two teams like Baltimore and so on and so forth really really find some find some guys that may not have been first round talents uh, but they can develop into NFL superstars and NFL stars alike and really serviceable starters and this is where the draft really starts not to say the draft doesn't start in the first round but this is where people who are draft experts people who are put on to NFL rosters who are here to evaluate young talent and draft potential and all this, that, and the third. This is where they make their money. This is where the bread is won. This is where the dollars are put, where their mouth is and where their credentials are and the scout teams and all this stuff. So this is where it's won. This is where if you can outmaneuver your opponent, outthink, outtrade, do whatever you need to do, but the rounds two through seven, this is where things start to get hot. This is where things start to get steamy. So I'm expecting it to get steamy in there. Uh, another prediction so far, I think that the next quarterback to probably go off the board is probably going to be Jake Fromm. I think Jacob Eason is probably not going to go before Jalen Hurts. But I think somehow, some way, someone's going to take Jake Fromm. And I don't know if it's going to be a reach or not. But I just have a strong feeling that a lot of people feel something about Fromm. Especially considering that Jake Fromm was, at one point, the the guy who was looked at above two attack below in the mock drafts. People really thought that Jake Fromm was going to go first overall. And that did not really work out for him. He had a rough season. As far as his numbers were concerned, and Georgia kind of had a lackluster performance when they were expected to really, really make some noise here. And they're still expected to make some noise here this year where they're ranked in the top 25. But here we are again. I think Jake Fromm is a smart kid. And I think that somebody is going to look at that and be like, we can work with this guy. And... They may not see him as a game buster or somebody who has elite level talent, uh, especially with his arm. But his intangibles might be there, and I think that sometimes the offense isn't always where you would want it to be. An SEC school that's really built on running backs, and they're called running back university for a reason over there at Georgia anyway, so... I think that Jake Fromm kind of gets a bad rep. Uh, some of it's justified. Some of it is probably scheme. And some of it is probably uh, offensive offensive play calling for a little bit because it was just all over the place. And maybe that's just an Atlanta thing because it seems like offensive play calling is so pivotal in, on both of those teams. So Georgia, University of Georgia – the Falcons offensive play calling is something that just always seems to come up in conversation, but that's what I I feel like. I think that there's going to be a lot of trades running backs are going to be flying off the board soon. Maybe some offensive linemen start coming more and more apparent off the boards in rounds two and three. We're definitely going to, I'm not too sure we're going to see quarterback go in the second round. I do feel like a third rounder, it is going to come off the board. I feel like Jake Fromm is going to probably be the next quarterback off the list before Jalen Hurts, but I think Jalen Hurts is going to be before Jacob Eason. And that's just how I'm, I'm really feeling this draft. But I cannot wait to watch it. I cannot wait to see it. And 
yeah, man, draft is here. Doesn't it feel good? Doesn't it feel good to see NFL people, big air higher ups, have drafts similar to what we do over here in the fantasy circles? It's kind of fun, right? All right. Well, this is the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. We'll be signing out here. Thank you all for listening to the podcast. Thank you all for rocking with us, rocking with me, staying up with me if you're somehow going to listen to this late at night. And don't forget to follow our social medias or our Facebook, or Instagram, or Twitter. We try to stay active on there, ask any questions, come interact with me, your boy, or anybody else who ends up being out there. We're all fun. We love to talk to people. It's going to be great. And don't forget to rate and review us on whatever podcast platform you listen to. Five stars, five stars. And thank you all for listening. Don't forget, please, people, stay safe. Listen to your government officials. Make sure you're following social distance rules. You're staying self-quarantined and being safe out there. Catch you all next week. See you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.